Imagine a source of energy that is constant, free and everywhere. And not only that, but one that's clean as well. Well, it does exist and it's right above our heads. Every second of every minute of every day, the sun emits vast amounts of energy. Yeah, did you know that in just 90 minutes, enough sunlight reaches the Earth to supply the whole planet's energy needs for an entire year? That's why many of these new buildings around us have solar panels installed on their roofs. Indeed, according to the International Energy Agency, the sun could be one of the world's biggest sources of electricity by 2050, reducing carbon dioxide emissions by 6 billion tonnes annually. But we're not quite there yet. The International Renewable Energy Agency estimates that solar energy accounts for 15% of renewable energy worldwide. And production continues to grow, thanks largely to subsidies and lower production costs, and at a much faster rate than anticipated. In this episode, we're going to look at the limitless potential of this renewable energy source. Ahead in the programme, we'll be shining a light on how solar energy actually works by visiting Europe's largest solar power project. Small is beautiful. We meet scientists at MIT conducting groundbreaking research at the nano level. Plus, we take a peek into the future in Germany, where more and more people are opting for energy independent homes. And delivering energy remotely to remote areas. We look at how solar microgrids are transforming lives in rural Kenya. As ever, we'll be navigating through this episode with a guest expert. Simon Mueller joins me from the International Energy Agency and he'll be explaining to me why, when it comes to renewable energy, solar is a bit of a no-brainer. But before we visit Simon in Paris, let's look at the different ways that we can generate electricity from the sun. Solar energy is created by the conversion of sunlight to electricity using photovoltaic cells. Since the turn of the millennium, solar power capacity worldwide has grown by more than 7,000%. And last year, a PV milestone was achieved when total installed solar power capacity exceeded 300 gigawatts. That's around 1% of global electricity generation. The solar energy market is booming, technology is improving and prices are falling and it's fast becoming an attractive alternative to fossil fuels. We take a look now at the inner workings of Europe's largest solar photovoltaic power plant in a region that is better known for its wine. Welcome to Sestas Solar Photovoltaic Power Plant. Constructed for French energy group Neoen at a cost of 340 million euros, it is quite frankly enormous. Donc la centrale solaire de Cestas, c'est un, un site qui fait 250 hectares, une puissance de 300 mégawatts, 1 million de panneaux solaires. En moyenne annuelle, la centrale solaire de Cestas alimente 300 000 personnes en électricité domestique. It's fair to say that when it comes to large-scale solar power projects, France was somewhat late to the table. The country is better known for its nuclear power stations. No surprises when there are close to 60 reactors. But for a late starter, France has made an impressive entrance onto the renewable energy stage. Alors c'est un projet innovant pour plusieurs raisons. La première, c'est qu'on a une orientation de panneau qui est est-ouest, ce qui permet d'avoir une une puissance installée à l'hectare euh, bien supérieure au projet traditionnel, de l'ordre de trois fois à peu près. Ça a été également un projet innovant euh, par la, la méthode de montage. Euh, on a vraiment utilisé des, des process industriels ici pour le montage, ce qui a permis de, de réaliser le projet en un an, ce qui est extrêmement court pour un projet de cette taille. These types of modern solar power plants are almost entirely automated. This plant has fewer than 10 on-site employees. Donc la partie manuelle, c'est surtout tout ce qui va être correctif. Donc euh, on suit au jour le jour tous les défauts qui arrivent sur la centrale. Donc ils sont envoyés sur un SMS d'astreinte. Et ensuite, à partir de ce SMS, on va se connecter sur, euh, sur le monitoring de la centrale et on va vérifier à quel endroit est le défaut. Ensuite, une fois qu'on a le défaut, la localisation, on envoie nos équipes sur place pour faire le correctif. Elles se débrouillent toutes seules. Nous, on est là que la journée. Et le week-end, on a quelqu'un en astreinte. Cutting-edge solar technology is helping to bring renewable energy to the masses at increasingly competitive prices. 
Donc la centrale solaire de Cestas produit une électricité que l'on vend à un prix de 105 euros du mégawattheure, 10,5 centimes d'euros le kilowattheure, ce qui en fait un tarif très compétitif. Et pour donner un ordre d'idée, c'est moins cher que l'électricité qui sortira des réacteurs nucléaires nouvelle génération. Solar is no longer attractive simply for its status as a clean source of energy. It's proving competitive in energy markets as well. Aujourd'hui, Neoen a plus de 1000 MW en exploitation et en construction et l'objectif à 2020 est d'en avoir 3000. As the sun fuels the growth of these Bordeaux grapes, it's also providing clean energy to thousands. Perhaps the region will one day be as famous for its solar electricity as it is for its wine. Simon Muller is internationally recognized for his work on the integration of renewable energy, in particular solar, into electricity grids. He is the head of the System Integration of Renewables Unit at the International Energy Agency. He's a recognized expert in power market design and renewable energy policy worldwide. Simon, thank you so much for joining us in this beautiful park in Paris. It's lovely and sunny, which is perfect because today we're talking about solar energy. So firstly, tell me a little bit about your career in solar energy. Sure. So I started off by studying physics, semiconductor physics, which is the branch that is most important for solar energy. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, I decided that I didn't want to stay in academia, but work more on the intersection between academia, policy and industry. Mm -hmm. And then seven years ago, started at the International Energy Agency. So we talk about using renewable energies. We get enough light from the sun every day to meet the world's energy needs for an entire year. Why are we not further using this renewable energy source. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, it's just an hour and a half, uh, approximately, that it takes uh, for the sunlight to be enough to, so to just meet. just 90 the... minutes. Yes, exactly. Wow. Um, a critical point to make absolutely clear is that already today, we've had huge improvements of these technologies. Mm -hmm. Many people think that solar energy is very expensive. Yes. And this was super true 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. It was true five years ago. Mm -hmm. But today, it's simply not true anymore. Mm -hmm. So. Solar energy is becoming cost competitive. Yeah. We see some auction results where the price of solar is coming in at a level which is actually cheaper than the price of gas to burn in the power station. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're really going into a cost effective era of renewable energy. Okay, so could solar energy as a renewable energy source really be the answer to the world not using fossil fuels anymore? Definitely it will be part of the answer and mm -hmm. it already is today. Important question is at what scale, how far can we go basically? Yeah. And there it's really about the techniques we have for system integration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how can we make sure that when solar is available we can absorb it into the grid? Of course. And then at some point it's also about using electricity to displace fossil fuels in other sectors. Uh -huh. Think transport, electromobility. Yeah, electric cars. Electric cars. Mm -hmm. So you charge the batteries in the electric cars during the daytime mm -hmm. and you displace the consumption of oil. Thank you so much for that, Simon. We're coming back to you in a moment. But first, think you know everything there is to know about solar energy. Here's one common misconception. You thought you knew? Think again. Myth. Solar energy can only be produced when there's direct sunlight. The truth. It's true that the more light photovoltaic panels receive, the more electricity they can generate. However, they can still work when it's cloudy. This is because solar energy needs light, not heat, and the very latest technology can maximize energy capture by mimicking sunflowers. Known as solar tracking, panels follow the path of the sun in the sky to maximize their ability to collect light throughout the day. Big is beautiful, but small is smart. Experts at MIT are developing materials so minute that one day we won't even be able to see what's powering our devices. We travelled to Cambridge, Massachusetts to take a look at this revolutionary technology. <music> Professor Vladimir Bulovich is an expert in solar energy and nanotechnology at MIT's School of Engineering. He's fanatical about small things, really small things. We're talking quantum scale. This picture is of a soap bubble, and on top of it, we rested one of our solar cells to demonstrate exactly how little it weighs. Two and a half micron device, 
that's just uh, roughly speaking about 1 40th the thickness of your hair. That is as thin as we need to make a structure that at the end will generate the electricity. MIT is a private research university, widely considered to be one of the world's most prestigious. Professor Bulovic and his colleagues are designing extremely lightweight organic photovoltaic cells. But why the focus on the small? Nanostructured solar cells can be made semi-transparent, in which case you might use them as the lenses on your sunglasses. And as a result, generate power next to your ears where you might have a hearing aid that would never need to be recharged again, or maybe a Bluetooth radio, again, that would never need to be recharged again. If you have it on your e-tablet, you'll be able to generate power through a transparent nanostructured cell. That particular e-tablet would never need to be plugged in the wall because just through the daily use, sunlight would shine on it or daylight or room light would shine on it, be absorbed inside a transparent cell and generate electricity that would power it forevermore. In theory, these tiny solar cells could be used not only on portable devices, but rigid structures. Look at the skyline of any modern city and there are millions of square meters of glass. Go bigger as you develop a technology and you can now start thinking about using it on the surface of every glass window on a skyscraper. The heat that you capture in form of infrared light, you can actually convert into electricity that can power that building. This particular device here is one of those transparent solar cells. You can look through them and there isn't much really there to see. But you can take what seems like a flashlight and you can shine it on this and the little motor starts turning because it turns out this flashlight generates infrared light, light we cannot see, but light that can be absorbed by the transparent solar cell, generate electricity that is feeding this motor and providing hence power needed for it to turn. There has been an increase of nanomaterials in the last few years, but they're still playing catch up with traditional tried and tested silicon photovoltaic panels. This is another version of a transparent cell, in this case exposed to sunlight and put in series. Put enough of them in series and the DC voltage coming out of it is over 100 volts. Power conversion is really what matters in these kinds of devices. And these devices are between one and 5%, maybe even higher as the technology keeps improving. Indeed, the ultimate performance of these cells is not as good as silicon, but they can perform functions today's silicon PVs cannot. It's likely to take years, perhaps decades, before transparent solar cells are widely available. Grids need to be changed, power storage needs to be reinvented. These are things coming up for us. Yet, it is obvious that as you look into the next decade, a very significant fraction of world's electricity will be provided by solar. Now, as we just saw, there, there's some really incredible work being done there at MIT. And apart from nano and silicon structured cells, what other areas of research are being advanced in solar energy technology? Well, first of all, it's a question of the time scale that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. So in the short to midterm future, making silicon based cells better still is a very important area of research. Yeah. And then what we saw in the MIT uh, video is the next generation okay. of solar cells and also those will be important in the years to come afterwards. Looking further into the future it will be about not just applications for the electricity sector uh, itself, uh -huh. but also looking at other sectors. So by using solar electricity to create synthetic fuels. Later on in the program, we're going to see um, German homes that use batteries and solar power to be energy independent houses. How realistic is this as an energy source for all our homes? Well, first of all, it's important to note that the vast majority of these systems that are being deployed in places like Germany today mm -hmm. that combine a PV system and a battery, they're not enough to make you energy independent okay. or even electricity independent. Mm -hmm. Now, why is this? In winter, you get a lot less electricity from the sun. Mm -hmm. So these houses will use electricity from the grid at times when there simply isn't enough sun during an entire week, okay. for example. And in fact, even if we look further into the future, there will be good sense to use the electricity grids that we have already and to also expand electricity grids. Mm -hmm. You know, in all areas of life, it's often easier to work together than doing things by yourself. Yeah. And actually, in energy, it's the same. 
Coming up after the break, Germany is taking solar battery storage to a new level, providing energy independence to thousands of homes. And we visit a rural community in sunny Kenya that's finally accessing reliable electricity thanks to solar energy. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.